right, so I did my presentation based on really hidden figures. Um, and then I just did like the real people that were actually involved in it. So basically, it is about three black women who worked as like human computers, is what they were called, um, for NASA in the 1960s. And they were like the people behind the people who were known for putting the first men on the moon. Um, and then a lot of them went unnoticed because of their like lowly titles, even though they contributed like a lot of their work to the engineers who were names behind it. Um, so the term human computers wasn't really like, it sounds like they're kind of like dehumanizing them in the movie, um, but really the term started in the 1800s and that was obviously before like computers were actual machines. So it was more of like the term computers, just people who compute things. Um, but then it was turned into something that was kind of dehumanizing and it kind of just made them seem like they really weren't people at all and that they weren't important and that they didn't really need to do anything and that they didn't deserve any of the stuff that they actually did because they were basically just given the work by engineers and they did all the busy work. Um, so then they were never really given accolades for what they all contributed. So I have the, there were three main characters. Mary Jackson was played by your favorite Janelle Monet. Um, she graduated from the Hampton Institute of Mathematics uh, and Physical Science with a Bachelor of Science. She worked as a school teacher after she did that because it was kind of hard to get like jobs in science as a woman and especially as an African American woman. Um, and then she started in the All Black West Wing, which or the West Area, which I think was shown in the movie, um, but that was where all three of them started. And she specialized in wind tunnels and flight experiments, which kind of was a straight path directly towards like space flight. Um, and then she worked at NASA for 30 years, where she helped other women and minorities get equal opportunities that she really didn't ever have. Uh, there's Katherine Johnson, and I don't know how to pronounce Taraji, Taraji uh, B. Henson. There we go. Uh, she attended college at when she was 13. She had like a high school education there because I don't really know why they made her do that, but they had her do college, like GED stuff at a college for her high school graduation and then also just went to the college later. So it kind of seemed pointless. Um, and she graduated with the highest honors in both her high school, high school and college classes. She worked as a school teacher as well because all of them did because they couldn't really, again, get jobs and things that they excelled at. Um, and then she was given a opportunity to work at NASA along with two white men because those were the only positions that, they only had three positions they needed filling and she was one of them, which seemed kind of surprising at the time. Um, and then her works, she wrote like a lot of papers and stuff and a lot of them were kind of like the literal best stuff that they had. So engineers used to present on them and she was obviously never credited because it was NASA in the 60s, but she, had a lot of published works that were kind of revered as like the like highest honors in the entirety of NASA. And then she worked on the Mercury missions and um, with John Glenn, who was kind of an astronaut, but like he wasn't really on the moon, so people kind of forget about him. Um, he requested that she worked on like all of his missions with him because he trusted her more than he trusted any of the other engineers behind it and uh, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom before she I think she was 101 when she died and then she was <coughs> up when she was like 90 which seems kind of I don't know kind of late to the punch there for accolades of what she did but it's fun I guess um, and there's Dorothy Vaughn which is played by Octavia Spencer and she again began as a teacher she joined Langley a lot before like everyone else did because she joined in 1943 um, and they like scouted her because of the desegregation laws because of the war um, and then she stayed because they needed her and then um, she became the first black NACA supervisor I guess but they didn't really call it that um, in 1949 and then she stayed when it became NASA because she was kind of just like a supervisor obviously and they needed her more than they needed like really anyone else. Like they didn't have any white men that would fill her position or white women or black men because no one else could do it as good as she did. Um, which everyone was kind of
kind of surprised with, especially even in 1949, because the other two came in the 60s and people were still against them. Um, and then she was hired then by NASA, obviously. Um, and she noted in Fortran, which she started in the 60s and that was still used by like the 90s. I know like my mom used that in the typing class when she was in college in the 90s. Um, and then she worked on computations and contributed to a satellite launching rocket, which was like her main work because it was after the moon landing and it still kind of, it founded the like basis of stuff that we still use today. Um, so I guess that was a little more notable than some of the other things that people were working on. Um, so I guess she's kind of the most accomplished of the three that were in the movie. Um, and then just to conclude everything, um, in times of segregation, there's a fine line um, where the government would rather utilize the minds of geniuses and to do so they had to kind of hide it from the public because they did not like the idea of smarter people being people that were already segregated and they didn't really want to know about their involvement in something that was better than they could accomplish. Um, they were, they forced their way up the ladder um, and they kind of made it known that they were needed and that other people like them were needed because no one was really being utilized. Um, and they got a full career in their fields. They were never, again, like uh, Michael Eagle Spencer's character, they kind of proved that they couldn't go away after they were needed and that they still had like stuff that they could accomplish. Um, and then the human computers got their praise like decades after the space race, but then the people who did were white women. Um, so then by the time it the time it took for black computers to get their praise was unjust and shows that the stigma has long lasting effects because this is really the first like movie that showed it and it's based on a book that was also written in 2016. Um, seven years ago was really not that long ago at all compared to a lot of the stuff coming out in like the 70s and 80s. So praise the white moving computers. Um, and of course, Thank you.